Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about one of the rare uh, conditions which we see in emergency room. But it is very important when we are managing refractory seizures in emergency room, that is porphyria. It's a rare disorder because of uh, defect in the heme biosynthesis pathway. There will be increased porphyrin production in liver and RBCs. So this is called as hepatic or porphyria or erythropoietic porphyria. They are inherited disorders. They can inherited as autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive or X-linked dominant manner. One type of porphyria that is porphyria cutanea tarda. It may occur due to increased iron overload in the liver, hepatitis C infection, alcohol or HIV AIDS. This is a, a, a acquired type of uh, porphyria. We see the different types. Acute intermittent porphyria is one of the most important type of uh, porphyria which commonly come to emergency room. Variegate porphyria, aminolevulinic acid dehydratase deficiency porphyria or ALAD porphyria. Hereditary copra porphyria. Non acute porphyrias are mainly X lingered dominant protoporphyria, congenital erythropoietic porphyria, porphyria cutanea tarda, and erythropoietic protoporphyria. These are the different varieties of porphyria. One of the important things we should remember. Uh, in porphyria is the precipitating drugs that is very very important when we manage this type of cases in emergency room we should know about these type of drugs which can precipitate porphyria or which can aggravate porphyria porphyria is one condition where uh, when we use these type of drugs uh, patient can have aggravation in symptoms especially the anti epileptic drugs we will see what are the drugs which can increase the problem. Alcohol, alkylating agents, barbiturates, carbamazepine, chloroquine, clonidine, dapsone, ergots, erythromycin, estrogens, ketamine, methyl dopa, metacopromide, uh, norepterylene, uh, phenytoin, progestins, pyrazinamide, rifampin, spironolactone, succinamides, sulfonamides, valproic acid. You can see here many anti-epileptic medications can aggravate porphyria. Most of the time these patients present to emergency room with uh, refractory seizures. So normally when there is seizure we try to start phenytoin, phosphenytoin, uh, valproic acid, all these things but the problem here is uh, it can aggravated can be aggravated by uh, these drugs another important drug is clonidine we know that uh, in porphyria because of autonomic dysfunction patient can have uh, hypertension sometimes sometimes it can be hypotension also so clonidine should be avoided in this type of patients and there are a lot of other medications uh, also a huge list of medications can produce problem in porphyria. So we should be very careful when we are treating uh, porphyria in emergency room. We have to always check the drug interactions and drugs which can aggravate the problem in porphyria. So you can see here heme biosynthesis pathway and enzyme defects. So the lot of enzymes are involved in heme biosynthesis pathway. Some of them uh, deficiency of some of these enzymes can produce different types of porphyria we can see that slide in detail so these are the enzymes uh, which has got deficiency can produce uh, different types of porphyria acute intermittent porphyria pre present with acute neurovisceral porphyria that means neuropsychiatric manifestations can a patient will be violent, patient can have loss of consciousness, altered behavior, 
seizures, all these things can be there in acute intermittent pathway. This is due to partial deficiency of hemobiosynthesis porphobilinogen deaminase. It's an autosomal dominant disorder. Uh, and these patients can present with, we already discussed that patient can have uh, disorders like altered behavior, convulsion, seizures, but they also can present with acute abdomen pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, paralytic ileus like features, urinary retention, all these things can be there. Other important types of uh, porphyria as, uh, are verget porphyria, blisters and sores on sun exposed areas of the skin can be there, darkening of skin can occur, stomach pain, nausea, vomiting, constipation, muscle weakness, seizures, mental changes also can be there. ALAD porphyria, here a patient can uh, present with uh, different types of symptoms like abdominal pain, chronic peripheral neuropathy and psychosis. Porphyria, porphyria cutanea tarda, they can have painful blisters over the skin, especially on sun exposed area. So that is porphyria cutanea tarda. Now photosensitivity features like you can see skin erosions, blisters, hyperpigmentation, all these things, especially on sun exposed areas, patient also can have uh, pain, erythema, hirsutism, photosensitivity, all features. This is due to accumulation of porphyrins in the skin. Neurovisceral manifestations, we already seen acute abdominal pain, autonomic dysfunctions like uh, tachycardia, bradycardia, hypotension, hypertension, constipation, increased sweating, neuropsychiatric manifestation like altered behavior, abnormal behavior, convulsions, hypernatremia due to SIADH, motor neuropathy symptoms are mainly episodic pattern. In between patient will be normal. Whenever patient is having aggravating uh, triggers, patient can develop all these problems. Drugs which can produce uh, aggravation of symptoms are anticonvulsants, sulfonamides, oral contraceptive pills and alcohol. In acute intermittent power failure, patient can have ab unexplained abdominal pain, especially in young women. Central nervous system dysfunction like altered behavior, abnormal, abnormal behavioral issues coma, seizures, all these things. Psychiatric problems can be there in patients. Hypernatremia is due to SIADH. And most striking feature of uh, this uh, type of porphyria is reddish urine. That is very, very important. So any patient who is having refractory uh, seizures, which is not responding to phenytoin, phosphenytoin, phenobarbitol, or if the seizure is aggravated, during your treatment and if the patient is having red during you have to think about porphyria. Now the diagnosis is mainly uh, uh, by demonstration of porphyrin precursor, precursors in blood and urine. Family history is very very important. Many patients can have family history but some uh, it is not a must that all patients should have family history. Urine Porphobilinogen excretion during an attack usually 50 to 200 milligram per 24 hours. Uh, measurement of uh, enzymes that are deficient also can be detected uh, in patients with porphyria. Now, this is a chart which explains how to investigate porphyria uh, in your clinical ward. Now differential diagnosis are very very important in acute abdominal pain. One of the important differential diagnosis for acute abdominal pain or recurrent abdominal pain without any major reason is lead poisoning. So like chronic lead poisoning patient can have abdominal pain, neuropathy and elevation of urinary ALA and porphyrins. So, uh, 
uh, here patient will typically present with abdominal pain and neuropathy but patient can have a history of uh, lead uh, lead uh, toxicity in the past like uh, some uh, medicines which contains le- lead he might have taken or in uh, olden days uh, lead containing paints uh, can produce uh, lead toxicity nowadays uh, all paints uh, which we use does not contain lead and patients who is having chronic liver disease can have encephalopathy abnormal behavior and it can also be associated with porphyrin excretion especially coproporphyrin so these are the two important condition which mimics uh, porphyria and it 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 can also have uh, urinary excretion of porphyrins so we should be very careful when we are treating this type of conditions now we will see the management uh, 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 who is having porphyry and uh, skin lesions we can use sunscreen ointment and beta carotene ointment repeated phlebotomy to reduce reduce the hepatic iron content can be tried chloroquine can be used in skin condition but sometimes uh, it can also produce uh, it can also aggravate the problem so we, sh- we should use chloroquine with caution now in emergency management uh, in porphyria it is very important that most of these patients present to emergency room with abdominal pain or seizures or abnormal behavior these are three important presentations which come to emergency room so we can try to reduce the uh, uh, porphyria levels in the blood by starting glucose that is a most easily available uh, uh, treatment for porphyria in emergency room intravenous glucose can be given at, at least 300 g per deciliter daily can be given it reduces the heme synthesis so there is a easily available treatment intravenous glucose can be given hemin or carbohydrate loading are used in acute attacks in emergency room uh, both can down regulate hepatic ala synthesis the rate limiting enzyme for heme biosynthesis in the liver that is ala s1 so hemin dose is uh, 3 to 4 mg per kg hemin once daily for 4 days narcotic analgesics can be given in abdominal pain you can try paracetamol also gabapentin benzodiazepam levetiracetam these drugs can be given in convulsions so all other anti convulsives are contraindicated in porphyria so we can try with uh, benzodiazepin and levetiracetam in emergency room levetiracetam loading dose is 15 to 20 mg per kg body weight as a loading dose or in adult we can give 1 g stat then 500 mg 3 times daily can be started gabapentin also can be tried to control the seizures once you stabilize the patient in emergency room benzodiazepines like lorazepam can be given uh, once the patient is having status epilepticus phenothiazines are useful in na- nausea vomiting anxiety and all so these drugs also can be tried so we have discussed about one rare problem which can come to emergency room that is porphyria porphyria can present to emergency room with uh, seizures uh, abnormal behavior abdominal pain when we see such conditions we have to rule out chronic liver disease by investigating uh, lft ultrasound or lead poisoning also should be suspected by doing lead levels in the blood because both of these conditions can have urinary uh, urinary uh, excretion of porphyrins in the in that condition and the most easily available treatment for porphyria in emergency room is dextrose or glucose so that can be tried other treatment also we have discussed and it is a very rare condition we suspect porphyria 
whenever we have a refractory seizure or the seizure aggravates on anti-epileptic drugs and most of these patients can have red urine. So seizure, altered behavior, seizure is not getting controlled with uh, uh, routine seizure medications and if the patient is having abdominal pain and red urine, we have to suspect power failure which is one of the rare conditions which can present to emergency room with neuro visceral manifestations, skin lesions or thank you.